You are now listening to Carly's Couch. I'm Carly. And I'm Lex. In this podcast, we discuss a wide array of topics about life and how to live your best life. Whatever that looks like for you. (laughs) Hope y'all enjoy. In this week's episode of Carly's Couch, we discuss the importance of reflecting on your achievements. Hello, uh, welcome to Carly's Couch. Thanks for joining us. Um, it's been an interesting year of topics. I would say pretty varied thus far, um, and we've been enjoying all of the conversations. Yeah, um, I, we actually got some feedback. So some of y'all are sending us comments. Um, please leave them on YouTube, on the website, um, on the social medias. Engage with us. We enjoy that. But um, some of the feedback from the listeners is kind of around the same thing. They're like, wow, I really like how you're exploring these certain topics. Or um, I got one the other day that was like about how we're exploring emotional processes, which I thought was mm-hmm. really cool. They're like, you know, I appreciate like someone actually documenting the process. But shout out to Keyshawn for sending me um, this comment. I just had to reach out to you personally and say how much I was impacted by this week's episode of one, of Carly's Couch, uh, 139, Keep Your Hands to Yourself. Conversations like this are so necessary, and I did not expect to be so impacted by it. Um, there are a couple memories that I was able to unlock while listening and processing, and I just want to say I commend your courage and your bravery as well as Lex to be able to share your stories so openly and just want you to know that conversations like this are really necessary and transformational. Um, And she says she actually went back and listened to the last few weeks of episodes and that she commends us both for exploring some complex topics with poise. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Keyshawn, for leaving that comment. Um, And then just to know for anybody who might be going back, it's probably 239, right? Oh, yeah, you're right, 239. Because I was like, well, that was a long time ago. I was like, no, No. we did that (laughs) that a couple weeks ago. (laughs) (laughs) My bad. We just did that one. Um, Yeah, but thank you. And, um, you know, it is so interesting because um, just maybe last week, I don't know, time's like running together. Um, but a week or so ago, um, I was having a conversation with somebody who is, uh, I guess not a stranger, but somebody who I just started, you know, having conversation with in the last couple months around work type stuff. Um, and then I, you know, next thing you know, I found myself, we're talking about perimenopause and we're talking about, um, you know, how growing up and why we are the way we are and all of these things. And I think it was so interesting that, you know, we may not be so vulnerable, but the more that you are and the more you kind of get used to it and talking about your own stories, having assessed them and what you've gotten out of them and, you know, what part that played in your life and all of that, Mm -hmm. to talk about it, um, you know, is good for you and your continued understanding of yourself as well as being able to help impact others. And the more we can talk about these things, good, bad, and ugly, um, you know, the more people just know that they're not alone in any type of situations or that they too can figure out, you know, maybe what they're doing or even just can have somebody else to like identify and not feel like, you know, whatever their problems are, even if they're totally different are just like their problems. Um, so I, I do think that that's pretty cool. And, and like I said, I've noticed that um, I guess technically we've been doing this for years by doing it on the podcast, right. Um, kind of practicing being able to speak to all of these different topics and, you know, why they're important in our lives, but even on the day to day, you know, being able to talk to people and uh, share your story is something that I definitely have found to be um, a change that I didn't like notice until I noticed it. Yeah. And it's so important. I love what you said. Like, um, and I love that these conversations give people space to not feel so alone and to feel seen or to even process their own things and open pathways for greater vulnerability and understanding and relationships. Because that's really what it's all about. Um, and we always said from the beginning, like, it was so cathartic for us to talk talk about these topics or talk through real-life situations. And so I'm glad that it's resonating with you all, too. So continue to send mm-hmm. us comments, send us questions and topics and ask us things. And, you know, it'll help just the whole process become kind of a like a full circle process yeah which um reminds me of when we would do like live episodes which we haven't done in a long time but um live episodes are pretty cool too because like people are able to ask and uh comment to the things we're speaking about while we're doing it um and so in the same way right like like carly said if you ever have any questions that you would want us to explore or maybe even if it's like a situation um that you'd want to hear a conversation around feel free to send that our way yeah 
We appreciate you listening. Um, and actually, these type of conversations is what inspired today's episode topic. Mm-hmm. And so I, I I don't know if I mentioned, I think I mentioned on the podcast maybe last week or a week before that my social meter like has been more full. Um, and I actually like wanted to hang out with people and be on the scene and kind of be in these streets a little bit mm-hmm. and going and seeing folks. And so um, this past week, I've probably had like five or six social engagements, which is mm-hmm. off the charts for me. OK, guys, I don't normally be out here like this and I'm still like energetic while I'm just going to ride this wave. But there's like this underlying thread in all of the conversations that I've been having with people and it's so interesting to me. So like from going to see someone who is an adjunct professor at like FITM, um, the Fashion Institute in downtown, to having lunch with someone, um, to like going to yoga with somebody, like all these connective things. And then um, today I went to go see my friend who was relaunching a tea brand, um, like like loose leaf teas, like an actual tea brand. And we were just talking about full circle moments and how like we've been friends for like six years. I was like one of his first friends when he moved to LA or actually he didn't even live here yet. He was still playing in the NFL, I think in Denver. And he was like, just like, wow, you were like one of my first friends here. And we were kind of reminiscing. And he's like, yeah, you know, you know the stuff we used to talk about, about me finishing school while I'm graduating this year. And I was like, Oh dog, like, I just want to remind you that that's one of the first things you told me that you wanted Mm -hmm. to graduate. Like you wanted to go back and get your degree. And he's like, man, it took me a long time. I'm like, it don't matter how long it took you. Like you said something. And I just want you to resonate with that in this moment of how powerful like your words are. And like, just like think about your whole journey to get you here. Mm -hmm. And I, I just am in so in awe and it's so beautiful to see people who, you know, spoke these things or had goals years ago and now they're coming to fruition. And you might have forgotten that you said stuff back in the day or whatever, but like seeing everything actually like start to blossom. Mm-hmm. And, and having those conversations, that's pretty cool when you can talk to somebody and then for you to react the way you did, right, to remind him and to encourage him and um, you know, to even have those types of friendships and or just connections. Sometimes it can even be with like a colleague or somebody mm-hmm. um, to where you do even feel comfortable sharing like what you want to do is really big in the first place. Right. Huge. So I think it's not even something to take for granted that somebody even wants to share that with you. Um, and then uh, my question to you, Carly, would be in that conversation, were there things the other way around that, you know, you were able to talk about having done or um, was it kind of going both ways as well for you? Um, not not in this moment. Like he did say, you know, I'm so proud of you, too. But mm-hmm. but I, you know, I wanted I wanted this to be kind of focused on him. Mm-hmm. So I like was like, nah, we're going to focus on you right now. But I actually have had. Um, a conversation like yesterday where I got an opportunity to Mm -hmm. think about some stuff. So um, I shared my story about growing up with children of domestic violence. So it's like if you grew up around domestic violence, like how what it does to your brain and the lessons that it teaches you that you have to unlearn as you start to grow up so you can be, you know, a healed whole person. Mm -hmm. And that was like 10 years ago. So I got an email from the nonprofit called Children of Domestic Violence. And the CEO was like, you know, we're just celebrating y'all. You know, we told your stories 10 years ago in this book. You can still go buy the book today. They're still teaching workshops around the world to help people unlearn these things. Because I think it's something crazy, like over 70 percent of people or something like mm-hmm. that grow up around domestic violence and trauma. Wow. Anyways. Yeah, it's, it's wild. And of and if you do, then you have a 90 percent chance of being in your own domestic violence situation mm-hmm. and like a higher. It's like you're eight times more likely to commit suicide. Like they're like the statistics are staggering. And so I'm glad that they're still continuing to spread the word. But I had this like like flashback memory of me being an engineer on the phone with the CEO and he, you know, just like him telling me like, you know, you should work for yourself. Like you're a lion, Mm -hmm. you're all these things. And like seeing, like reflecting back and thinking about in that moment, I wasn't doing any of that stuff. And now I'm doing all the things that him and I talked about. And I haven't ever like sat back and thought about it until I got that email yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and, And I think like that's, kind of the frame and what we're talking about today is not even just the like how to make your dreams come true or like even though we are going to speak to like the importance of like calling these things out and setting them it's really like just how you know appreciating and enjoying those moments of reflection when you are reminded of that reminded of of where you started or reminded of what you said. Um, I think there's something really good in those moments and and quite frankly I guess that really reflects just those moments of gratitude, right? So we talk about gratefulness, we talk about being grateful, um, and that when you're in that place of feeling grateful, that that's kind of being in abundance in that time, right? And you're thinking about um, 
what you have and what you've been able to do. And, and in those moments, I feel that it's easier to continue moving and it's mm-hmm. easier to like be in a space of like confidence or on your next call, you know, tearing it up, doing a good job, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, as opposed to even, even with the same success, right in the same moment, as opposed to when maybe I'm more thinking about like, Oh, the things I got to do today or, oh, man, I want to get another client or, you know, whatever it might be, right? Mm -hmm. So those moments where you can remember, those moments when you can reflect on the fact that I actually did something is really, really important part of the journey, I would say. Um, I have these moments all the time because I've always been such a tracker uh, from the beginning. So even um, the day I, not the day I, I technically started my business, but I, so I started in September 2012, but I remember in January 2013, and I probably told this story like a hundred episodes ago, but I had a day where I had to be like, all right, am I really going to like do this for real or not? Like, um, you know, cause I had already had like been freelancing and had like little clients here and there, but I had like zero processes, zero, you know, business acumen, et cetera. And it was just like, okay, do I really want to do this for real? And, um, I basically had spent like hours with my boyfriend at the time, like writing out plans and just jotting down things and numbers and names and ideas and, um, you know, when I decide like, okay, I am going to keep going and I still have that paper like even now. Right. And that's 11 years ago, almost now. Um, so it, it really does feel cool to go back. And especially when you look back and see how low the numbers you talked about <laughs> were and things like that. Um, and so even for me, right, like right here, I have, <laughs> it's so torn up. So Y'all cute. can't see it for real, but <laughs> it says capitalized social success book because at first the name was capitalized social before all revamps and stuff and it's tearing apart, but it says started in January, 2014 by Alexia E. Clancy to develop ideas, methods, and plans for creating a successful business. And like all through here, I have stuff. And then I even have like other notes from like 2018, 19 and all these things. Look, I'm talking about, making my courses that I still need to actually hit mm-hmm. go on. Um, but in this book, it just has so many notes. And as I was looking at this before we even started recording today, I was like, hold on now. I could go back. Some of this stuff is like, I'm more ready to do it now because there is so much groundwork that's been done. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so it talks about just all kinds of things from like having a membership section on the site and, um, how to do all these different types of things, how much stuff is going to cost. Um, And even, like, what types of people do we want to work with, blah, 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 right? So, like, I've always, I I can always have those moments because I've always, like, written random things down. Mm -hmm. Um, Even from random things, like, "Hmm, I want to have a show or something like that. Um, From which, like, I, you know, me and Trap Bond have had our show that we did, like, years ago. And, you know, things just happen. And then all of a sudden you remember, like, oh, I did write that down. Um, And now I'm, I'm looking at this, like, I can go back and easily and more intentionally make some of this stuff happen that I was writing down now that I'm in a easier position to like get it taken care of. Um, so I think that that happens all the time. And I love those moments because they kind of just keep me going. Um, because like I said, at the beginning, it's easy to feel like I'm still like always chasing after something or trying to figure something Mm -hmm. out when it's like, nah, look at all these things you figured out like thus far. Man, yeah, it's so daunting when you're always, like, looking ahead to, like, where you want to be and not taking time, like, to be present or even, like, looking how far you come. Not to say you get stuck there, but it is important important to check in. Mm -hmm. I remember um, when I was moving out of my apartment after I graduated from USC, I was, like, you know, throwing away papers and trying to like declutter all my stuff and I shook a journal like to put it in a box and a piece of paper fell out and it was when I was writing what schools I wanted to go to and I was like I want to go to USC and I was like damn Mm -hmm. I'm graduating like wow this is Mm -hmm. so cool like I totally forgot I even journaled this but like wow that's the thing too so if we if we forget right if we have Mm -hmm. a moment where we see something that we wrote down before or, or a reminder that we said something in the past if we don't even remember it right now after we've done it and or doing it, does that, did it have any effect to like have wrote it, wrote it down in the first place? Yes. Um, does it make sense what I'm asking? Um, we're not even thinking about it. Right. But then all of a sudden you remember that it happened. Did you need to write it down? Did you need to say it? So I think, I think there is something to, um, 
like writing things down and saying them like your brain hears them and tries to make them true but also in manifestation that's how you manifest you like write things and you say them and then you let go of your attachment on how they're supposed to happen mm. or when you're just supposed to kind of put it out there like that's a big piece of manifestation I mean we actually did an episode 188 on manifestation so mm -hmm. if you want to go back and look at listen to that one but like that's a big piece is like that non-attachment and so I think it's funny sometimes that we write things or say things and then kind of forget about them because that is like non-attachment. But then it's like, oh, wow, I was being intentional when I pointed my, you know, life or energy in that direction. But I wasn't like so in control of like how I'm going to get there. Yeah. And, um, you know, not being attached to the actual outcome even um, and definitely not how to get to an outcome is kind of an important part because that that is like having certain expectations hanging over you. Right. The whole time you're moving. Um, which means maybe if when we're in these spaces of the chase or not thinking about, you know, the gratefulness of where you are and what you've gone through or whatever, um, that you immediately need to kind of shift back to that or like try to remember or try to refocus on that um, because it's almost kind of pointless to like really be like too pressed about, you know, what that final thing is. Um, but I don't know if, I don't know if writing it down. So I do agree that, and then there's all the science about it too, right? That writing things down kind of puts it in your brain. Your brain, your brain is obviously strong and, 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 you know, takes care of everything. Mm -hmm. But I think that it can imprint to, it, it wants to prove you right. So if you write things down, when you um, are saying a thing, your brain is storing it and wants to make things happen. I think the thing is that sometimes maybe we make it slower or block it because we probably say so many negative things too, right? I don't think Huge. we probably don't write as much negative stuff, right? Because then when we write, we're usually maybe intentional about what we want to do and what we want to see. Um, but man, like your thoughts and some of the things you say sometimes probably hold that back, but it's all there. So imagine if like in writing and, and getting your ideas down, um, that you always have like this kind of point to go to. And for me though, maybe it's almost more important for that moment of reflecting on it. Like maybe you didn't have to write it down for it to happen per se, but to have that moment to help you remember, I think is always cool. Like in life, like mm -hmm. anything that reminds you of something is always kind of a bring you back to the present moment um, and bring you back to thinking about like what really matters or what are those things that matter um, as opposed to all of the other things that you're worried about yeah because we get inundated with life and get kind of dragged down and so you know you can believe whatever you want to about you know writing down and manifestation and all that stuff but to your point like to actually have like markers to monitor progress or even to celebrate things like is so so vitally important because you always see like when people make it they talk about the journey being the best part mm -hmm. like when you get to the end of something when you finally achieve that thing the thing that was actually their favorite that the days they said meant the most were the struggle days or the days you were working towards that thing yeah and you know what's most interesting i'm thinking about as you're speaking is that the times i plan the most so like one of these sheets which it, the type is so small i can't even read this right now <laughs> But, like, it literally has, it says goals at the top mm -hmm. under website, content, marketing, sales, all this stuff, right? There's a bigger goal. And actually, I was real smart because, like, my goal is, like, create a system. Um, but that's another topic. But then underneath, it has all these tasks. And it's so funny because while I think it's important to, like, know all the tasks and stuff, you know, I actually move the slowest and the most off with our, so within Capsoche, we have um, what we call an action tracker. Um, and for biz dev type tasks, tasks that like don't have to have a certain date, so not like client type stuff, but like um, internal biz dev type things, a lot of times all the tasks can be there, but it's, I still, it's, it's, it doesn't get followed as closely. Um, and yet, what the things I end up working on and the direction it goes or the order that things happen or mm -hmm. the way it happens, It'll happen, but it might not necessarily be the way you planned it in the biz dev. Um, that's not to say I don't think it's important not to plan, but maybe it's more important to, like, focus on the impact or to know what your impact or your intention is mm -hmm. for your work or for your life or for your relationship or for whatever it is, right? Um, so that if you're saying, like, oh, I want to really, I want to have a really loving relationship um, in which... I feel okay being myself and I feel safe and this and this and this, right? And this is going to visualization. Um, 
to have that lead you, I think you it may be okay for you to say some exact things. Like you might write down like I wanna uh I wanna have a, a girlfriend or I wanna have a boyfriend and by October. Like you can say whatever, right? Cool. But if you know in your mind, you also have the intent of, so when you're talking to people, meeting people, it's easier to like, be like, nah, that's not it. Or mm-hmm. this, this could be interesting. Let me stick around here. Let me try to, to, to hop into this conflict here, you know, with, um, more authenticity to myself or, you know, all those little things is still kind of like, that's a main driver to where you actually are moving more towards those things you might've written, even if you forgot about it. Um, in your regular life. So I think all of that is married together and it's not necessarily just write it and leave it. But if you can really have some, you know, values or some intentions set that you're going to move that direction regardless. Yeah. And that sounds like that's like how you actually follow through on some of these things. Like when we're thinking, cause we probably write down a lot of goals that probably don't mm-hmm. happen too, right? You probably write a bunch of stuff that don't happen to or hasn't happened yet. Mm-hmm. You know, let me stay positive. But um, I think it's, if you really think about like how you want to feel or the impact that you want to make or the type of communities you want to build, if you think of like that and you focus your energy there, it allows a lot more space for the magic to create those things. Mm -hmm. And then you might find you accomplish those goals as opposed to um, being a lot more limited. Sometimes I think even in being very specific, like we limit Mm -hmm. God or the universe or whatever you want to call it. Like we limit them because maybe they had a bigger plan involved and we just were like those low numbers that they used to be on things. The other, or it would be like, I want to make 50 K a month by having 10 clients that pay 5 K. And I'm like, Ooh, no baby. (laughs) Let's you know, let's that? bring that down. One to two client people, that right. pays fifty, right? Okay. Like that's one client, two clients, and I know ten clients, baby girl. Um, but also, I mean, cool. But you know, it's like mm, I could have, I could have like not had to even put all those little numbers, mm-hmm. or I could. But I think sometimes maybe two right those numbers at a time makes it feel real to you. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, to one of the last things you just said, I was also about the how. I was thinking the other day because I was like, man, I need a new car. Um, and that just feels so overwhelming, like that process to me for whatever reason. Um, but every time I get to thinking about it, I, I, not always, but I often lately stop and be like, man, reminder, somebody might like turn around and give me a car one day or something like, um, and, and in my head I was, I would laugh and think of scenarios of like, what if I was in like, uh, at the bar and mm-hmm. you know, Beyonce was in there and we were just chatting it up. And she, and then the next day she just like sent me a car and not Beyonce, but like, you know, I just thought about that. Like it could be anything could happen, um, to where maybe you're given a thing. Maybe, Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to think too hard about, you know, the pieces of it, but also that being said in the process, I'm still like, okay, let me think about by when do I need to get one? Um, what's my credit? What are the payments need to look like? That makes sense. Blah, 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 blah. And yet my brain is open for anything to happen. Um, so I think about that too, or I, I often challenge myself when I'm starting to think about the how that, well, if I'm gonna think about the how, let me think about the coolest random how that it could be too. Um, that's even less work for me. That's so funny. So, um, I love neuroscience and manifestation, spiritual things. And so I follow that stuff on TikTok. So it pops up Mm -hmm. and there's this neuroscience, uh, guy who is talking about one of the best things you can do for yourself. It's so funny. You do it without even knowing that it's an exercise, but like is say, you know, think about that. Like, okay, you know, I want to make 50 K a month. Like, how can I make 50 K a month? And Mm -hmm. then he was like, think of 20 things, like challenge yourself to think of 20 ways. So well, the first one could be Beyonce gives me 50 K because she sees me and sees me working. You know, or, you know, I have a great uncle that I've never met that passed away and just decided to leave me Mm -hmm. his kingdom plus 150K or whatever, you know. But then you also get to, you know, I could get one more client every month that, you know, they need 50K worth of work. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you just start to challenge, but it's because your brain will start to think of ways that it can happen and then start to bring that energy into your life. And you'll see it like happen probably a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that is cool to do that because it also reminds you that you might not have to achieve yourself, achieve through everything. It kind of reminds you that there's endless possibilities. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's so funny because the more I speak with people and they're talking about like what they want to do or life or whatever, um, I'm more attuned now to hearing like limitedness, which is not to say that that's like, oh my God, you're limited because you're only, you know, thinking like I'm scared to if I should take this job or not, or like not, not to judge anybody about it. And yet, in my head, I, I will think like, well, it could also be this. 
And and I've actually sometimes I'll say stuff stuff like that to them, like, well, what about this? What if this happened? Or, um, you know, just to kind of at least give a different perspective mm -hmm. that's like without the limit or a ceiling or I don't think that would happen type vibes, right? Because I think that that's an important gift that you can kind of remind people or give people as well. Um, yeah, and I, I I hope I can catch myself continually and, and do that because I love – I, I think that's also, again, maybe this is all about, like, being in a state of abundance with all this stuff. Mm. But it's, again, kind of being in a state of abundance because you're you're not just – you're just not thinking about how it has to happen. And I can have my abundance of energy and uh, time and whatever, and maybe this stuff would just, you know, kind of happen in whatever way. So be open to that. I think that's what makes it cool because when we reflect, half the time <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I did do that thing, but – it wasn't how I said or, you know, it, it, it was something random that happened or, or because I met this person, then this happened and that happened. And, you know, so what was, well, let me not say what was the point of planning, but um, there's probably less point on focusing on that plan. And you like on a day to day, though, kind of just focusing on your intention and focusing on like moving in a particular direction. Mm -hmm. Being curious um, is one of the best things you can do for yourself. And like you said, that's a great gift that you've given to other people by questioning and helping them to think outside of where something is. Because we all know, like, if you broke and you struggling, like, sometimes it's really hard to think expansively and mm -hmm. to get out of your situation. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, we all do it. We've all been there and hopefully not going back there, but mm -hmm. have been there for sure. But it's, like, ways to just try to expand your mind and maybe like look up or look out of your situation and not be so weighed down by what's going on. What's going on. I think right that's now. probably um, the reason why I can be like, F it, we ball because I just be spending money or I'll do things, you know, I'll do what I can do or I like to do what feels right or good in the moment. Even mm -hmm. if it's like take a nap all day today instead of the project that's due tomorrow. But then once I start, I was like, okay, I have my energy. Boom, boom, boom. It took me a couple of hours instead of like trying to kind of drag through it perhaps. Right. You never know, but like just kind of honoring, um, you know, your thoughts, feelings in the moment. Um, and yeah, the, the things can happen. Um, a couple of things. So with this episode being about the importance of like reflecting on what you got done, um, what are ways that you can do that? I think um, this kind of recap slash adding, but um, number one, I think one of the best ways is if you do have people in your life that you can talk to about these mm -hmm. things, right? Somebody that you can be vulnerable with. Um, and it doesn't have to be like your deepest, darkest type stuff, but um, like Carly and her friend or um, um, Carly and, and any other friend, like really. So like between your friends, between your family, whoever, right? Colleagues. So people, yeah, people that, you know, you can just have conversations about the direction you want to go, the things you want to do. Um, that's important because, A, you never know how they can be a part of getting you there. Um, but, and B, it's allows you to sometimes speak things for the first time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you don't even really know until you're having conversations and it's like, yeah, I do really want to go to school. And maybe that kind of is the first thing that happens in your mind. Um, and three, so that later on, it's like maybe there's somebody who will bring that up later or remind you later um, in the future. Um, and then secondly, what are some ways, like even with just writing it down, like stuff that you could do for yourself um, to kind of reflect on what you what you got done? Yeah, absolutely. So, um with what you just said and like checking in with people, it's kind of, it sounds like kind of like um, yearly check-ins with like managers or whatever, like mm -hmm. about your progress mm -hmm. with things. And so just being maybe more intentional with your friends, like, Hey, you know, like the people that you trust and can share those things and be vulnerable with doing that. But also you can do little um, like check-ins with yourself. Like maybe write down those goals. Like I know we used to do passion planners and talk about that or mm -hmm. whatever. You don't need, you can just use a sheet of paper. I was just going to say that because I was looking at mine too, where at the, yeah. at the front of it, it yep. says like three years, one Five, year, three months. Like, yep. And then it's like, take one of them and like really break it down. Yeah. And so like setting your own standards, like whatever works for you. So maybe if you just want to check it once a year, you can do it the first day of the year, first day of Chinese new year, whichever day mm -hmm. you celebrate or mm -hmm. your birthday, whatever day you celebrate the actual new year. But, or maybe you could do quarterly. So each, like, that's a great way for business. Like, you know, what are my Q1 goals? And then you check in at the end and see like what you actually did. Mm -hmm. And again, focusing your goals on like how you want to feel, the impact you want to make. Um, you can put numbers and stuff to it, but don't put so many that it limits you um, and, and confines you. Like, oh, I, I need 50K a month, but it has to be through 50 clients. It's like, nah, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, leave it open. 
Yeah. I think one of the biggest things, though, too, is that sometimes we have trouble remembering or or because it, it might take somebody else to remind you mm-hmm. um, that we don't even remember all the things that really are getting done in the first place. So one thing I did one year was I had a jar that anytime I maybe got a client or a speaking engagement or something happened um, big that I, in the moment, I was like, oh, this feels really good right now. This is something I should write down. I would write it down on paper and put it in the jar. And then at the end of the year, I remember, like, taking it out and putting it all in front of me because, like, oh, I forgot all about this. Like, um, you know, I was asked to contribute to a book. Like, oh, I forgot about that, and I forgot about this, and I forgot about this. Um, And I think that's, for whatever reason, like, that's really easy to do. Like, Mm -hmm. even if somebody asks you, like, oh, did you have a good week, or what would you do this last week? And sometimes you're like, "Mm." (laughs) it's like, meanwhile, I was like, oh, I was in, like, five different cities, like, you know what I mean? Like you did the most, but then all of a sudden you're not really focused in on it. So let's also be sure to take the time necessary to like actually when a thing happens, celebrate the thing right then, mm-hmm. write the thing down. Um, and now you also have like this big list of wins that you have and not just list of goals that you want to get to. See, I'm glad you said that because I have a jar that I have not been putting things in mm-hmm. <laughs> that I was intentionally doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, so do that. And I think that, That's one way you can, like, just monitor your progress. If not check in, but just, like, monitor the journey. Like, we talked about that being, like, the most important part and, like, where the most meat is of our life. It's, like, working towards those peaks. And so just taking those times to celebrate yourself. Um, I also have another jar that are, like, it's like a love on yourself thing. So it's, like, little reminders for myself. And I was talking to a client, and I think it ties in here. So um, one of my personal training clients had a really bad week at work. (laughs) And she said that she has made this thing called an add a girl folder. Um, Mm -hmm. And she has like a physical copy and a digital copy of when people love on you. So if you get a raving review from a client saying you are the best, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever you are this, if you get one from somebody you work with who said, wow, you're such a great boss. Like, thank you so much for pouring into us and building community. If you get one from, you know, a client that, wow, thank you for making us feel special and going above and beyond, but also can be from people in your life. Like, wow, you're amazing. We love you. And anytime you're kind of like struggling to see the bigger picture, like that could be something to help you expand, to have like an add a boy, add a girl, add a myself, um, whatever folder to remind you in those moments too, like to stay present. Yeah, that one's really good because, um, a lot of times you harp on if you have any kind of negativity. And like we said, too, sometimes you're your own um, kind of enemy with, like, your own thoughts mm-hmm. about doubt or so- low self-confidence or whatever. Um, but there's people all around us all the time who are, like, hyping us up and telling us thank you for something or mm-hmm. um, that you did well. And I think that that's cool to, like, have all that um, as a way to look at and remind yourself of, like, oh, I'm actually really good, like, all of this is evidence. Get out of your head because, like, what's in your head a lot of times is actually not the evidence. So um, keeping track of this real evidence is monumental for sure in reflecting on your journey and reflecting on and being reminded that you know, I'm actually doing this. I'm getting things done um, and things are moving. So um, can I wrap up? You have anything say, else that you want to say? I was going to say, say um Yeah, so take some time to think about what resonates with you with all the stuff we've said. If you have other things that you do um, to celebrate yourself or check in or one way to monitor your goals, like hit us and let us know um, at Carly's Couch so we can share with other people. Because I think as, like, it's kind of new for me. Like you said, I think there's so many things I've done that were amazing in the moment, but I forgot about them or didn't write them down or was so focused on the next thing that I missed it. And I don't want to. I want to take time to celebrate all the things. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of times you, it might not even be that you missed it, but then you move on really quick, right? Sometimes mm-hmm. we move on from good stuff real fast, and then we'll <laughs> hold on to, like, bad stuff. So it's like, no, you can hold on to that for a little bit longer. Um, if you got something out of this episode, please leave us a review. Leave any comments for discussion. Like Carly said, you can hit uh, Carly's Couch on social media or um, CC Fierce, Carly Carpio, Lextopia, If you want to celebrate something that you've done or if you're reminded of something that you got done, feel free to post those things up and engage with us this week. Um, And then Carly has a shout out um, for this week. And then I have a different question, too. So I'm just going to roll through all that. Yeah, I just changed it up. Okay, so my shout out are are my friends who just relaunched their tea brand. So check out Stand Still Teas on Instagram. They're standstill.teas. 
I think, T-E-A-S. And that's Torian, Tiffany, and Wei Chow. Um, their teas are amazing. Loose leaf, oolong, brewed. Uh, their roasters are in Taiwan, I believe, and, like, award-winning roasters. So I was, like, testing them so I can bring some for Lexi because mm-hmm. I know she's a tea person. I know. I'm all ran out, too. Oh, <laughs> so man. I need some. <laughs> yeah, so um, go check them out. Go support. Go buy some stuff. They're going to have some events launching soon. And then this question of the week, what is something you can celebrate for yourself today? Or like through the past week. Come on. We just have, we made we um, think making people think about oh, it. Oh, like okay, so like what's the thing that I, I did to yes, celebrate? Yep. Um Or no no, like what's the thing you can celebrate about yourself? Or like something that you've done work wise or something like that. Like a pivotal, like a moment in life you can celebrate. Oh, in general. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um because it's so broad and boring. I mean, it, I think there's a lot of things, but um, right this second. Oh no, I would say I can celebrate. Um, I can celebrate uh, a next step in the company of um, in the way of like taxes, accounting, business manager, like having um, uh, people in place that are doing a lot of like some of the business and finance pieces. Um, as a sub piece to like just in general, like having a built out team. Um, I think that's a big thing to celebrate. That's huge. That's a big thing. I'm, you know, still working on that. So I'm going to be excited when I can celebrate that. So shout out to Cap Soch and all the team. Um, mine is really just sitting with the gravity of like 10 years ago. My life was so drastically different and I really am doing all the shit that I said I was going to do. And that feels mm-hmm. so good to be like, I, I did. I'm doing this. Like I'm living this life, and like just how unhappy I was at my job at the time. Like it was great. I'm not shitting on them or the company. They're amazing, but it just wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. And so you know, me betting on myself feels so damn good. Yeah, me. yeah. And it sometimes it could take a lot longer than you think, or you know, you never know how long certain things will take, right? Because I know some people, um, especially being out here in LA, who they like, came out here and like a year later now they're like in all the shows, movies, mm-hmm. etc. And then sometimes it's like you can want something so bad and it could take a long time to get done. And so hopefully there is this um, there is something to remember and like making sure that at least like you enjoy what you're doing, what you're building. Um, And if you're putting your best into that, if it's still feeling good, like there is a time when everything can change very quickly. So keep it up. Stay on your journey and reflect on those wins. We believe in you. (laughs) See you next week.